Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a little repair work to do on a 2014 Radilac XTS. Uh, it's got one of the common problems. The Q system, which is just the navigation infotainment system, uh, isn't responsive. They have a lot of problems with these. So we're going to have to pull it out of there and replace it. Uh, so let's see what it takes to get it out of there. Actually, let's see what it's doing so you can understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So there's our problem. The lights are on, but nobody's home. So the touch screen's unresponsive. So we need to pull this out and Repair or replace it. Now Cadillac's pretty proud of their parts, so a new replacement unit is going to run you just shy of $2,000. It's a lot of money for a radio. Um, and you guys know me, I don't mind used parts, but when you have a part that is a common failure, especially an electrical part, even if you get a working used one, how long is it going to last? Um, and they're anywhere from five to $900. Sometimes you can find them cheaper. They do delaminate. You might find it a little cheaper, but this car only has 30,000 miles, so it's not like miles has anything to do with it. And trust me, the owner of this car was not beaten on it in any way. I don't think this car's ever gone over 60 miles an hour. So the best thing to do, and actually the cheapest, is to have it rebuilt. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull it out, or we're gonna send it out, and a lot of you have asked me, who repairs radios and stuff like that? Well, now I have an answer for you. It's called Upfix, uh, and they're sponsoring this video today. So big thank you to those guys. Uh, link is in the description or right there if you want to type it in yourself. Uh, and they do all kinds of different things. Uh, they'll repair radios, ECMs, BCMs, clusters, uh, ABS modules. Pretty much anything electronic you can send to them. Uh, they'll do mileage corrections. Uh, if you have a cluster out of another vehicle that you need to put in yours and you need the miles set to whatever your vehicle had on it, they'll take care of that. Uh, check them out. They actually do a lot of different things. So we're going to send them this and let them work on it. So let's get it out of here. We have to dismantle most of the dash. So let's get started. We'll start by opening our secret little cubby that most Cadillac owners find on accident. Pull out the little tray down at the bottom. Now we'll pop this plastic off that's underneath. Really wanted to make sure it wasn't coming out. The Velcro grill's on, but this little tiny piece of four by six plastic needed four clips. Clips are usually pretty friendly. Not today. Now you can pull the side cover off the dash. I'm gonna pull this little bezel off of here the vents and everything. There is one plug for the ambient lighting. So we'll pop the clip out of its retainer and then unplug it later. It's a little bit easier. Stick the plug back in there. And we'll continue pulling this little trim piece off. And go as far as we can. Now we have to pull the side of the console off. this panel even though it's a hundred times larger than that little panel still only has eight clips in it total so now we can access some of these screws we'll pull these screws out of the side give ourselves a little more room not really necessary now we got the screw off for this panel but it's still trapped in there so we're gonna pull the center console side off the other side There's no screws, just clips on these. Now we'll unbolt the center console. The center console actually sandwiches in those little trim pieces on the side. So we're gonna have to slide it back. We're not gonna take it all the way out. So there's one little cap in the back. If you slide the seat all the way forward, you can get to it. Go over to the driver's side. Buzz out the screws for the center console. 
slide our seat forward and get this one in the back here. Those little caps are different right and left. So if you put them on and they don't seem to fit right, check and make sure you got the right side on the right side and the left side on the left side. Found some more screws in the center console. And now it's loose. Get that other one on this side. It was hidden behind the carpeting. And now we can slide the console back a little bit. We're going to leave everything connected. Shifter, wiring harness, all that stuff. Just need to slide it back about an inch. And we can pull the ashtray back. Okay, if we take the other screw out, we can pull the ashtray back. So that's what we're going to do now. There we go. Now that gives us enough room to get this little piece out that's behind it. It uses the same screw hole as the ashtray. So we'll pull that piece off. And we're gonna pry the same piece on the other side off. It's just a little smaller because it's cut off where the steering column is. Just clips in. I'll slide it up and over. We want to unplug the button because we're going to need to move it around, so we'll just set it off to the side. I'll pull the center dash vent bezel off. Just clips in. Now we need to take our buttons off of here. There's four clips, two on each side. Just kind of pry them out a little bit, slide the buttons out. Plug kind of gets snagged in there. So you kind of wiggle it out until it comes out and we can unplug it. Do the same thing on the other side. Every time I seem to touch this one, the glove box opens. And the four ways are still going from me touching the button on the other side. In order to turn them off, we have to plug it back in. We'll do that in a second. So now we can unbolt the HVAC and infotainment system. It's all one big assembly. So it's just got the six bolts. The top two were behind those buttons on the side we just removed. That's why we had to take them off first. Yes, the hazards are still going. So now we got it out of there, we can start unplugging it. And yes, I do need a screwdriver that large unplug the plugs. It establishes dominance and the plugs submit. And I'm also too lazy to go get a smaller one. So our system's out and ready to go. Well almost ready. We're gonna pull these brackets off the side. It's a little bit less to ship and less for the rebuilder to have to worry about. I don't have to remove them then. It's only six screws. Let me slide right off. Now we're going to box this thing up, send it off for them to repair it. When it gets back, we can throw it back in. Now this repair costs less than most used ones, and it comes with a one-year warranty. You get a used one, you get 30 to 90 days, usually only 30. And best, they'll probably just refund your money. Uh, this warranty, they'll repair it again if it breaks within the year. Uh, if they can't, then they'll refund your money. But uh, yeah, I'll take a year, probably last longer than the brand new one from GM. So let's get it shipped and I'll see you guys in a couple seconds when this is back. So our radio is back from Upfix. So I got the Dulles razor blade I could find. Let's see what it looks like. I wasn't kidding. Way better than the package I sent them. All right, 
Let's get it in there. So now the installation is pretty much the exact opposite of removal. We're going to put the brackets back on the side of our HMI system. Human machine interface, if you wondered what that stood for. They slide in in the front. Then there's three screws on the back on each side. Okay, now let's put it in there. And we can put all our plugs back in. We don't need our excessively long screwdriver to put them back in, just to remove them. So we'll plug them in. And we'll fight our little door that wants to open in my hand constantly. We'll pull the wires out that are trying to fall behind the radio. They go to our little buttons on the side. Okay, the door works. It's a good sign. We'll screw our unit in here. We'll plug in our buttons alongside the display and inevitably open the glove box again. Just line them up and they snap in there. It's a little tricky getting the tabs to line up and the plug to go in there. That would be the time where I would normally verify the repair, but I want to build some suspense for the video. And I have full confidence in Upfix, so we'll wait for the testing. And I'm feeling brave today. Hazards are on again. Must be complete. So now we're going to start putting our trim pieces back in. We'll start with the little one first. Slide it behind the ashtray and everything. It does drive without the center piece in there. The heat stuck on whatever you left it on and the radio doesn't work. But if you need to move it around while you're waiting for the system to come back from repair, you can. Slide it behind the ashtray. We'll get all the tabs lined up. And we'll push it in. There is one slotted tab on the bottom that doesn't have a clip on it. Got to make sure that one's lined up. Now we can put our trim piece on the other side. We'll plug in the ambient lighting wire. And we'll set it in there. Get that tab on the bottom lined up. It was a little easier on this side because I took those screws out of the bottom of the dash. So now we can screw our ashtray and those two trim pieces in. Put our screws back in the bottom of the dash here. Put our side cover back on our dash. Use our bumper installation tool. I had it handy. Now we'll tighten up the screw on the other side for our ashtray. And we can slide the center console forward again. We'll start our screws. Now we're going to tighten up the ones that pull the center console forward first. That'll make all of our gaps nice and tight. If you tighten up the other ones and the center console's back a little bit, those won't draw it forward. You want to tighten those up first. Then you can tighten the other ones in any order you want. If you already started them, they'll run right in. We'll put our seat forward. And we can get to these rear ones. Close them in there. Throw our caps on there. These are the hidden ones behind the carpeting. It's been a week. I forgot where they go. But I had an extra couple of screws, so I looked around until I could remember. So now we can put our sides back on our center console. Line up all the tabs. And clip it in.
bumper installation tool works for that too. Put our screw in the back of the console on this side. Tighten it up with our driver that identifies as a torque wrench. And put a little cap on. Now we can put our cover on this side of the console. Snap it in. And we put our bezel around our center dash vents. Open the glove box one last time. And then we can put our ever so important cover above the ashtray in. The one that's never going to come out again. And our little cubby opens up so that we can remember to put the tray in the bottom of it. And now we'll give it a whirl, see if it works. Gotta wait for it to wake up. It's been on vacation in Georgia. So we'll find something to press on the screen and hey, what do you know? It works. Well, at least the screen works. It's still loading. And loading. There we go. Now we have a map. We'll find some spots on the screen to test and see if it responds. That was our problem before. There wasn't a single spot that actually responded. So it looks like the screen's working everywhere. We're going to call this fixed. So when your Cadillac Q system goes out and the dealer wants a small fortune for their replacement part, and used ones are probably just as bad as the one you're taking out, uh, give up, fix a shout, and send a radio to them and have them repair it. You get new parts and a warranty. It's gonna last a lot longer than the used one. It'll be a lot cheaper than the new one. So that's what we did. Customers happy. So other than cleaning my dirty paw prints off of the dash and console, this job is all finished. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.